collected, very poised nature they've started to adopt. And we're seeing a very cautious start here. A little bit of an information gathering mission there for Exist. Just trades out, loses out a little bit on HP, but again, just sees where Wenton is, sees where these players are getting set up. And it looks like a hit towards A may be coming eventually, but NIP are taking their time on this. Yeah, man, not a single nade picked up for NIP either, a decoy. I mean, that's all they have to work with. Instead, it's just run and gun straight up, take the fight YOLO. They've got the Kevlar, so they're looking for a brawl, and Fnatic, they're going to focus on train on Alley, and they do it perfectly. They take out Exist, so there's no flank here. Now they know exactly where Nip are playing from. That bomb is going to get planted, and it's all on the retake. Or just Dennis, com Dennis completely denying an IP. And Dennis is always such a deadly threat, especially on those pistols. Already finding two kills down by the old bomb train, but Forrest does collect the bomb nicely, and he can make a play from this. Gerrite's already on to B, but Crims and Dennis en route. Gerrite has to be massive in this round to be able to just make it safe enough for Forrest to be able to get the plant down. There you go. Gerrite gets the information, takes the flight towards Flusher as well, loses out sadly, and now it's just Forrest left, and this looks like Fnatic's round from start to finish, unless Forrest can find some magic, which I think is a bit of a, a bit of a reach, and Crims <laughs> puts him down, and I think you probably heard that as well as we did. The hell was that? I think that's the last, the loudest I've ever heard Fnatic get. That's got to be Wenton. That He's has to be. be. Yeah, I'm like, I think that Crims actually looked over like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> <laughs> when were we what was that? Team? What was that? Okay, that Fnatic, man. Oh. I, they just won the pistol. They've got the strong start on CT side. So we're talking about NIP trying to apply a maximum amount of pressure on them. Well, Fnatic, they show that they're up to the task and that they actually are here to get the job done. 1-0 for them so far. You can't just be taking, you know, straight up fights. These guys can still hit those shots. That's what we're waiting to see is how do NIP kind of abuse the fact that Wenton's in this? Can they find a way to really put him under pressure in such a hard spot to play. And while this is certainly one way, I think he may have at least caught a glimpse of two players there, so we can expect the split coming out. Flusher perfectly turns the flashes, but can't get a real shot towards Get right there. And there comes the pressure coming out of main, and they're actually getting some decent kills off this. Fryberg leading the charge with the Tech-9, but Dennis keeping this one in check. Two kills back-to-back, -back, locks it down, and keeps them with the advantage. JW, he's passed. He's passed on the flash, and they're going to run right into each other. What? All right, trade places. And JW will find the kill in the end. He's got the UMP as well now, so they managed to stabilize quite nicely here. Fnatic, that looked so scary at train. I mean, at Alley to begin with. But they do manage to calm things down, and that's in large part due to Dennis being up in Sniper like that, being able to look over any of the nades that are coming through, being able to pick people off. While Nip were focused on Alley trying to sandwich the people in there, Dennis in the meantime was getting work done. But Freiburg, he's not done yet. He's, take, he's taken out Crim, so we're into a 1v2, and they're and he, nowhere near that B site. Yeah, he's got time for this. He's got a smoke and a flash. Sure, the retake's going to be pretty hard for him to actually keep in check, but he's going to get a bomb plant. Okay, this has suddenly got a little bit more interesting. He's got time to readjust pretty well. He doesn't know this, of course, so it'd be a big risk if he just you know, plows out of sight, but he can get a decent spot. And Dennis and JW have a long way to go. JW does have a kit, though. Yeah, they do have a little bit of time to work with here, and they have a smoke on JW as well, so we have to see where he decides to use that, if he's going to smoke off upper or lower. One or the other, basically, that's what they have to do, so do as they clear out the rest of the site. And Freiburg, he's already taken up position. This is the standard spot. You get into that upper spot, and you actually try and look down onto the bomb. And right now, he's hoping to actually catch somebody out of position, but Dennis is there in the nick of time to save Fnatic. JW, he's counting his lucky stars at this point. He was done for, unless Dennis got up on that train fast enough. Way too close to call. All right, so it looks like we've got Freiburg turning up to play here so far. That was a pretty nice round played out. Just about saved, as you said. That was, that was damn close. Damn close. But nevertheless, they keep it to check. And now, NIP's money. It's They've good got enough. a couple of plants. They're fine. They can go for a couple of P250s, a deagle. You know, just try and get something done. You've got a little bit of armor on Get Right. So it's not over just yet. They can still do great deals of damage here. And Get Right trying to take a little bit of a cheeky peek there towards, uh, well, I think it was JW on the end of it. But not going to get much out so far. Yeah, I looked for the one shot, uh, the one deag. He's not going to find it, though. They still have the utility, however. Freiburg with that smoke. And so what it looks like is NIP want to slowly work their way over towards inner site, get that smoke down on lower, and just see if they can't YOLO out and get a bomb plant. Because get right, he's been toasted. So this is all about NIP just gathering up and looking for the bonus money. They're going to be able to, bu to buy, and a pretty decent buy as well in the next round regardless. But if they get that bonus 800 on everybody, it's going to be super solid. They're going to get whatever they want. So now's the time here for NIP to get the job done. And JW, he's flashed. He spots them running down. Can they get the bomb onto the site? That's all they need to do at this point. Stick the bomb plant, and Pyth will just barely get it down. Crims not able to get in position to deny it. So Nip, they've got to be happy with this round so far. Yeah, that's mission accomplished for them. You, you don't assume you're going to get a round win out of these ones, but they certainly do exactly what's required. They get the bomb down. They deny JW. Great use of the flash. Coming in perfectly timed, allowing them to cross out. And as you said, getting that bomb down was the main mission of that round. Yeah, that's super sick. 
now they, they have all the options going into the next round. They're going to have all of the nades necessary for whatever the hell they want to throw at, uh, at Fnatic. So now at Nip are primed and ready to go, and it's been close enough. The pistol, maybe not so much, but the follow-up was definitely, you know, something to put Fnatic a little bit on edge. Now that they go into it with the full buy, no AWP picked up, interestingly enough, here for an IP. It's just AKs, a single Molotov picked up on Freiburg, and then full standard default kind of nades coming out from everybody else. Let's see how they want to play it out, because right now it is looking like at least... The Pretty standard default. I mean, they do drop the bomb up in Hall, so they have the option to wrap towards Inner if they want. Yeah, they will be clearing out Brown Hall, so they are being thorough. But there is, I'd say, four stack. There's four players at least present towards A for now. Crims is yet to be able to call anyone over, but he is such a solid solo site player. You can kind of play like this for now, but Gerai and Exist are going to start pressing that issue. JW's been forced to pull off this site, but that bomb's not there. They're still playing pretty default. It's allowed for us the chance to find Wenton, and they're starting to work these guys down. This is a Brilliant bit of play from NIP. If they can make the stick, Garrett's getting great deals of map presence, but he turns his back at the wrong time. He gives Crims the drop. The trade comes out towards A as well. Now Flusher can fall back. They know where the hit's coming now. And Fnatic weathered the storm long enough to bring it down to a 3v3. They're going to have to make up their minds. Where is it? Are they thinking that it's in it right now? I mean, Crims is going to be pushing up close. They wrap back into CT. Freiburg's already waiting for him. Molotov there to buy even more time. And the bomb only just now getting planted. So there is still time for Fnatic to make the play. If they want to go for it, JW's got an M4 to play with. He's trading out that AWP. If they can catch somebody out of position here from NIP in the next 10 seconds or so, they do have a solid chance at it. But So they need to catch somebody making the mistake on NIP. And that's the whole thing. NIP, with the experience that they have, they should not be throwing this away. And Freiburg takes the peak. It could have been risky, but then there was always going to be Forest above if required. And now JW's just going to back out of this. There's nothing else he can do. Probably wishing he kept that up. But again, if you wanted that retake, the M4 was the right option at that point. But great stuff from Freiburg. Positioning came in towards the end to stop that retake beginning at any point. And the first gun round. The big round, I guess, if you want to call it that way, will go to NIP, so they get themselves on the board just as required. And actually, Forrest finds the AWP too, so that's a nice little free pickup for them. Yeah, that was actually, he just kind of stumbled on that as well. So a free find, that's sick. 47.50 saved, Forrest can hold on to that if he wants. Pyth is also capable on this map with the AWP, so there's options for NIP. Whereas Fnatic, it is going to be the Force buy from them. That means a Swag 7 on JW. He's just as good with the shotgun, though, so it's not a huge hit to him. He used to be famous for going into Pop Dog and basically dominating that part of the map. On the, I mean, so, you know, you give the guy a shotgun, and he's going to do exactly that. Go straight into Pop Dog. And he's hoping to catch somebody out of position here on NIP's side. So whether Pyth makes the mistake or not. Yeah, he better be ready. Hell, JW does that with an AWP, let alone a Mag 7. So we're going to see if that's going to be something in the back of his mind, because NIP aren't taking this slow. They're going to go straight in with the pace. They've had enough of Fnatic's playstyle, and they're punishing them for it. Forrest picking up two, finding Flusher first, then JW pushed up to pop. Leaves Dennis so alone on the site. And now Crims, guess where he is? All the way over at B. NIP with a very competent take here. I uh, get right. I'm surprised at how aggressive he's going. But he's even going to catch Crims looking the wrong way. What was that? Would think that get right would be dead 100% of the time there, but Crims caught off guard. That's a rare thing. And now, the, I mean, well, Fnatic, they are the ones who get to ponder what they need to be doing here to change up because they're going to be on pistols. Is it going to be an aggro play? Or are they going to try and go for the force? It's almost a double eco scenario, but no, mm. it's pretty much a hard eco out of them. Okay, then. Wow. Just going to accept the fact, I guess, you... you Kind of, kind of sucks for them, considering how like much Dennis was keeping them in those early rounds as well. You've got to think maybe if he's not able to have that big presence in these gun rounds, this could be quite difficult. And Wenton has been overrun a good couple of times now. Not sure if that's just what NIP wants to do or if it's just working perfectly into their play at the moment. And now look at this. Look at this hold from NIP. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're just sitting there like, all right, what are you going to do? They basically have 30 seconds to sit all the way back in spawn. Watching every push. Now they can use a molly to clear out corners if they want to. If they don't want to take that fight, they can clear it out with a molly. They've got all the time to work with. Yeah, Fnatic are playing this like a default as well. So, wise play from both teams. I have to give it to NIP, though, to put three guys over there. I think that they've identified now, you know, where the weak spot is going to be here for Fnatic in the defense. And we saw that, you know, just it's looking a little, a little crazy over there when the push comes through on that alley side. A bit off on the nades, a little bit off on the timings, and Nip, they're not going to let you make those kinds of mistakes. They will punish you for it. But now it looks like NIP going to go for that default A smoke strategy, cutting up the bomb site, cutting it in half, and then the rest of them just kind of splitting from Pop Dog and A main. And the pressure they put just a little bit with uh, existing pit over towards B, pull three players over there. So even this default now is going to be a little bit tougher, even if they try and kill each other working their way out of Pop. Flush actually does find Freiburg, so that's a little bit of damage for, what, a P250 investment? It's not too bad. Get right's pretty low. And when Dennis is still alive, there's always a little bit of danger on the table here, especially on pistols. 
Yeah, but the USP exists. We'll be able to catch out the one. Dennis will hit the headshot onto Get Right, though. Get Right was low. He'd already been headshot before, so not a whole lot of HP to work with. It should be cleaned up pretty clearly, cleanly here now for NIP as Crims is going to be the last man alive here with 68 HP. USP, though, not the best gun. And Forrest will end him in the end, but still, for a hard eco to get two kills, it's actually pretty good work for Fnatic. And yeah, Flusha, I mean, he invested 300 in the round. He'll take that kill any day of the week. That's perfect as far as he's concerned. Whatever you can do here to chip away at Nip's growing economy, because you guys can see on the right side there, Nip's money is kind of getting out of control here. They're dancing on the edge. So Fnatic, this round that's coming up, they need, to win, they need to win it. But not only that, they need to win it decisively. They need to make Nip spend a lot of money in the next round. And I'm waiting to see if Crims is ever going to go for the maybe a little bit more aggression on the B side, try and get some earlier control. He's playing a little further up, but still, as he is that solo player, I guess it's that really hard predicament. If I push up, do I get punished, give up the sight? And with Gerai being pretty aggressive in some of his plays, he does back away from that one, doesn't commit to it. Can be pretty deadly. I think Forrest may have even just caught a glimpse of one up on top. That is Dennis, who does get caught out massively. Forrest gifted a perfect opener, and his orping on this map has been extraordinarily proficient. And look at these guys. They have feet out in these sites on both sides of this map. You've got Gerai on B, you've got Forrest on A, and Freiburg creeping up Ivy. They have so much map control here already. Yeah, they're going for the full Lurk game. Freiburg decides to offer himself up, and Gerai will get caught by Crims on the B site. So just like that, Fnatic have the man advantage now. And a two-man advantage is Flusha crouching over here on the other side of the map. We'll catch Forrest looking the wrong way as well on top of the kill on Pyth. Now it's just Exist out in the open. He will get one more parting shot in, but he will get shut down by Wenton in the end. Not as decisive as Fnatic would have liked. They would have liked to have four players alive at the end of that round. But still, they do manage to take the round away from NIP and halt that momentum that NIP were starting to generate there. Yeah, that would be a danger. Considering how spread out NIP were, there was, there was very few trades available unless maybe Freiburg had gotten closer. You know, a lot of things have to fall into place. That was a lot of individual, I guess, pressure for NIP to land those shots. So good for Fnatic to just lock that down, say no to that, and get things back to where they should be, get things back going in their favor. The first real gun round, I guess, so they actually picked up at this point. But now what do NIP do? They've been kind of playing that default play fairly often. They haven't been adapting too much. We haven't seen that all-in B play. And now they might just go for that. Yeah, it seems like it. It seems like they're realizing that um, Fnatic are holding very far back because mm -hmm. Get Right was allowed to lurk out several times now. He's done that twice now where he's been able to lurk out onto the site and without running into anybody up close. So it seems like now it's NIP looking to take advantage of that and Exist will open things up. Crims is gone. Now just now JW is only going to get in here. And he misses the shot as well. And that pretty much ends it for Fnatic. Just like that, with that one missed shot, they're thinking about how they can actually start thinking, you know, holding on to these guns rather than trying to go into a 4v5 retake on a site that's already well under control for NIP. And they backed away from that, but they're coming back into it. I, I'm not sure what they're doing here. Wenton just went for this. He did at least get a foot in the doorway, but a 3v4 retake is pretty difficult, and they want to get these guns away. But Wenton's landing shots. This has suddenly become a little bit dangerous, but... Again, the time is running pretty low here. They have a kid on two. Now it's down to Exist and Freiburg, and suddenly they're getting themselves focused back in this because Wenton is going above and beyond here. Now Freiburg left in a 1v3. Bomb is planted. He comes in with a spray. He gets down two and keeps this round in the hands of NIP, and he just did brilliant work for the side. Fnatic tried to just add that little bit of pressure at the end and just got sent packing. Wow. I'm so amazed at how close that was, actually. In the end, it should have been so clear-cut for NIP. I, I mean, think granted, they, they didn't take done. the fight. They didn't take. I think, that, yeah, I think they were kind of like, all right, well, Fnatic, nobody's showing themselves. Fnatic, it is a tendency of theirs to allow for the clock to run out a little bit on that bomb before they start pushing in. But uh, for NIP to allow it to come down to a 1v3 like that, <sighs> okay then. A little bit scary, a little bit scary. I mean, the, the hoot coming out from Forrest there at the end was just a little bit quieter than it usually is. So I think he, he might have felt a little, might have felt the nerves. Ooh, this is different. Flusha has been supporting Wenton hand in hand. This is a bit of a turn up, and bear in mind that's the only rifle they have, and that is a sick bit of use for it. Three kills back to back, shuts off the IV play, and now NIP are left with two. And NIP going back to what's worked in the past. They're like, okay, well, if they're going to wait for us to push up with three players, we can overwhelm them. Flusha, one step ahead this round, decides to take the fight to him, and it works out marvelously. Dennis looking for the wrap on Pyth, he's not going to find it, so we are into a 2v3. And while Fnatic, they don't actually have any utility to work with here. But they do have the bomb. Yeah, they do have the bomb, but they have a single incendiary. Eventually, NIP are going to have to get over here somehow, though. But there's no Kevlar on Crimson JW, so if they get caught in a spray fight, it's going to get nasty. Crimson's got a headshot position, though, so this is a good spot for him to be in. But he will get tagged by Forrest and dropped. And Forrest now knows that there's a second man beneath him. And that's one way to approach it, I guess, just crouching through the fire and flames. And now Pitt's left in a 1v2. Now, Wenton's got armor, but JW doesn't, so this could be pretty deadly. Any nade's going to do a fair bit of damage. Still has a molly and still has a flash. 40 seconds to work with. 
JW splitting out of there. He's already backing away. And Wenton locks it down. Great stuff from Flusher to start off with. And Wenton to close it down. And I've never heard Fnatic being this vocal. Like JW sometimes, but yeah, this is charged between both of these yeah. teams. I'm not, it's not often that you actually see them going this ham. It's a lot on the line between the two Swedish teams. I mean, Fnatic want to hold on to their, well, their spot as number one. Yeah. I think Nip might have been pretty close to taking it away from him, so. There's a lot on the line here between both of these teams. Pride, reputation, the whole lot. But again, well, NIP were like, well, that last round, and I like this actually from Threat. Last round was a fluke. It's not every round that Flush is going to get a triple spray down, right? So let's go ahead and actually go in and slam the defense. And there we go. Went and overwhelmed completely. Flooded by the NIP players. Now they've got a great entrance towards the site, but look at it. Flusher now wants to get back in the action. He is not laying back in this one. He is so active in taking these fights. Takes down, get right. There's the support from JW. Dennis catches out Pit, and now they're down to two. As soon as Fnatic get a little more active, they're starting to take a lot more of these bodies with them. And Forrest, well, left on 19 HP and pinned. Not much more you can do. Fnatic starting to really power back into this, but this is, you know, this is brute force. This is not pretty CS at times. This is, you know, man mode style, just, okay, I'm Flusher. I'm going to take the fight against three. Well, Flusher's sitting on 14, 1, and 5 right now. So, yeah, it is Flusher. Kind of called him out earlier a little bit, you know, just saying, well, Flusher, he needs to really step up and show that he is that top fragger, that he is the monster on Fnatic now that Olaf Meister isn't here. And right now, in this map, at least, he's doing it. He's managed to inflict big damage so far, and he's leading the way on the servers. So, now that Nip, you know, have actually made it, made it through that round of eco, because let's be straight, that was a round of eco. So losing it, not the end of the world for them. Now all the focus is going to be here on this round, where they have four rifles, the Tech-9, handful of nades. It seems like they want us to take another crack at this B site, because A site's been a little rough for them these past couple rounds. Yeah, JW had four point, well, he's got 4.2k left over, so actively choosing for the Mag-7, not exactly unheard of. So, again, see what he can bring through with that one. Playing over by B, maybe having enough of Get Right, being able to sneak through, trying to cut off that route. We'll see if that works out. Again, NIP have a lot in their playbook these days. It's not just, you know, the standard defaults that we saw time and time again. Well, it's looking like the yeah, default right now. It does look like a standard a, default. This is a different way to set it up, but this is they are going back to the A smoke strat. Well, I guess working through Ivy didn't work out. Let's try it another way. You've got to get past Dennis and Flusher, though, this time. And, well, Flush has got himself in a good position. Down by train one. Dennis as well, waiting so patiently for his chance to shine. And there's the first. Can't get the second. Exists. Locks that down, and now Fnatic can start the rotate. Yeah, really solid work there by Exist. Uh, Flusher, again, operating from the same position. He's going to be able to spot out the man getting across, so he knows there's somebody else on the other side of that train. And Wenton, there will be no backstab. <laughs> well, there's not going to be any flank. Instead, it's Get Right just coming out from the site. Shoot him in the back, and Freiburg will take out Flusher. And just like that, Fnatic, they've lost control of the situation, and it's time to back off, perhaps. Although the last time I say that, they did go for it. Krims will find one kill. And the bomb is still relatively fresh. Hmm. Hmm. I know, it's like a hmm, do you go for it? JW, he's, he's in a bit of a rough spot. Because Freiburg's already got the angle. And Freiburg with the double kill to lock it down. Triple kill at the end of the round. JW just had to find a place to use that gun, I guess. You know, when you're in Mag 7, you're not going to make your way uh, out of pop with any luck at that point in the round. So, had to do what he could. But let's just check in who's like doing well. You're not too surprising. Flusher, very much at the top of this Freiburg as well, doing pretty nicely for himself. And, well, Pitt's been pretty quiet, if I'm honest, considering how well he played earlier. It'd be good to see him start finding his own in this one, but we'll have to wait and see this is still early. And JW on three kills so far. Well, it was an interesting thing, actually, because Fnatic last round, they actually had the anti-B play, the anti-B setup. Both of the players on B were holding very close to the halls, right? Mm. Instead of being far back like they've shown, like they've shown Nip so far in this first half, yep. they've actually, they actually set up. So had Nip gone to the B side, it could have gotten nasty for them. Could have. So Fnatic, I mean, they're, they're changing up as well, trying to keep Nip on their toes. This is the battle of wits right now between Flusha, who's calling again. Is he and, actually calling? Uh, yeah, apparently he is calling. He's back in it. Huh. And threat, obviously, for NIP. The one thing I would say is I like NIP's approach to these anti e codes. It's something that you see on other maps. The wait for the 30 seconds. Is there a push? What are they bringing? How are they approaching this? And then the slow build. Again, Freiburg and Forest haven't committed anywhere. They're, they are working their way towards B, but this is still such a slow approach. But it has allowed time for Fnatic to get that feeling of, oh, it doesn't feel like A right now. We're not seeing those defaults much. We're not seeing anything. And they do have a lot of players present on this site. So this could be a little bit rough here for an IP. Especially because Dennis can go flying up the ladder and Pop Dog very quickly to go for that flank. Pythe just goes leaping out, however, finds the headshot on JW. Can get the second one as well. He should be able to pick up the third if Flush actually peeks his way. And he will get herded back into Pythe's waiting arms. So a triple kill for Pythe opening up that B site, despite Fnatic going for the stack with the pistols. Well, from this range, the CZ, it's not really going to work wonders. <laughs> 
even for Dennis, the pistol master, not today. But if I he had the dig. You could have seen some. I could have believed in that. All right, fit with a good round then just to clean that one up. But I've got to say, I do like their B play. We saw Get Right before kind of flying out on it on the perfect setup with that flash. It's actually working really, really well on their T side, and I haven't seen something work that well for quite some time. Or that, I guess, consistency for a T, you know, with that sort of consistency on a T side, being able to make it out on that B side off the back of the flash, no one able to challenge it out. First Get Right, now Pit, both can make it work. But 6-6 six, six now. Some teams getting more and more proficient on this T side. I'm not going to read too much into it. Both teams showing that they do have a little bit of bite to their bark here. So again, Fnatic do have the all back on JW. So hopefully for him, he can find a bit of something in this one. Because he's been relatively cut off. But look at these smokes towards A. And then no commitment from NIP off the back. No, they're really trying to sow some confusion in the ranks here. This is said, once again, Forrest trying to lurk his way out. And this time, Dennis will shut him down. So no joy for Forrest. Crimson position to get the spray onto that B site, um, onto the B site lower ramp. But it's just mm. not going to be enough. And this time, get right bests him. So, NIP scores 6-6, and they're in position to set it up a seventh round here. It's a four-on-four four retake scenario, and now a four-on-three. Get right has put himself in such a good position consistently throughout these rounds as well. It's catching Fnatic in such an awkward spot. Now, Wenton's retake last time got pretty close to getting that one kind of under their, <laughs> under their wings, but we'll see if they can get anywhere near that. Smoke goes in towards upper. Freiburg still on the side. Last time he saved this round, he might have to do it again now. 2v3 exists still with a molly, can put it into play, but Freiburg dancing well, tries to buy a bit of time. But the last two players from NIP are pretty locked up here. This could get deadly pit, though. Going man mode, and now the clock is almost running out. Wenton doesn't have a kid. He needs to back away. Time is done, and it may be close, but it's NIP to once again win out the round. He saves that AWP at the very end. A nice little touch there for Wenton, but yeah, it's just not good enough this time again. NIP, and it was, it was sure it came down to a 1v1 again. But um, this felt a little bit more in control for NIP. This definitely went a little bit better for them mm -hmm. in this round. But I'm, you know, I, I'm curious to see if they're going to keep trying to throw Fnatic for a loop and head over towards that B site because that is the site where they really are getting a lot of work done. Fnatic, though. See, the one thing I do want to say actually is we've been questioning a lot of Crimson's performance, and he did just fine against Cloud9. That was, you know, that was just. He didn't really have to do too much in that, I feel. As, as harsh as that sounds, he wasn't really pressured. But now we're seeing quite an equal team to their ability here. He's not shining as brightly. Normally, you see a solo site, you see him on a site, it's like, okay, well, he's, he's at least going to trade effectively. He's at least going to do what you expect of Crims. At the moment, he's actually been a little bit outdone, if I'm honest. And I don't know if this is something that NIP have thought of, you know, coming into this, okay, this is the plan, or if it's just working out very poorly for Crims at this point. Well, it's interesting to see that Crims has not once gone aggressive in, uh, in the upper halls. Like he, and now it's Wenton. Well, this is because JW has the AWP over by Alley, but Wenton's got Crimson's back here. But even when they were fully bought up, you know, Fnatic, they just don't seem to want to go aggressive anywhere. Apart from that one push from Flusha on Alley, the what? they're really waiting and yeah. they're giving Nip a lot of room to work with. And that's, I think that's the biggest thing right now that's standing out is just the fact that Fnatic are playing very passive. They're counting on their aim to get the job done when Nip come onto the sites. But and up here showing that they have the tactics and they have the coordination as a team to take advantage of this, all of this space. And speaking of coordination, I'll wait and see if that pop flash comes out again. It'd be Forrest to go for the leap off the back of it. And I think we might just see at this point. No, they're going for something a little bit different here. And while it still works out, Exist catches out. Crims, there goes Wenton and Hello B site. It's all yours, NIP. This execute is working so well. Yeah, oh no, and Dennis. That is not what he wants to see. Three people turned, ready and waiting for him. No flank possible. And while JW is on the other side, Pyth did not hear him get shot, but he's going to be able to go for the. Uh, I guess you can call that a dunk. It was close enough. Oh, Flusher. What can you do now, buddy? Let's make it a little costly. Get himself some money there. But this is starting to become a little bit of an impressive T side from NIP more than anything. It's, you know, if you, if you, I, I feel like if I'm watching Navi on their T side, I expect this scoreline, right? It's like, well, it's Navi on T and, and it's on train. They, they seem to have a real way with it. Or maybe Luminosity. Again, another team really good on their T side. But between these two, you know, the vast majority of the time, on train specifically, Fnatic have been dominant. And this sort of half is extremely good for NIP, considering they didn't even pick up the pistol in this. Yeah, they, they, that's what's really incredible, right? No pistol, so no easy rounds. And they're going back to the tried and true. They're going to have three players over here by Alley, ready and waiting. JW is up close with the Swag 7 this time. And Wenton is there to try and draw the attention. So he's going to try and bait for JW. This is the whole point. Because from Nip's side, this looks the same. And it's the same exact setup used by Nip. So there we go. Surprise, surprise. Get right has no reason to look to his left. He gets picked off, but there is a trade frag. So it's only a 4v4. 
and that's the info they need. Dennis has been able to find Pitt, so that stops the bit of play that was meant to come out towards the A site, pins them in. None of that anymore. So what does the, the, the rest of NIP do? They have three players left, zero map control. Crims, for once, is pushed up on B. You have a lot of map control and knowledge in that Fnatic lineup. Yeah, just brutal for uh, for JW. He's hoping for a single player to be there because you're thinking, well, that's kind of a one and done sort of scenario, right? But it's it's a one and done if there if there's like one, or I mean, if there's three players there. If there's like one, maybe two, maybe he gets out of that, and maybe Fnatic, you know, just dominating it. But uh, unfortunately for him, Nip, they've just been putting three players over there several times now throughout this first half. That's, this is shown to be the kind of like default opening strategy. Now, however. Fnatic have the man advantage. Still, firepower isn't fantastic here for Fnatic. So, NIP still have an advantage in that sense. They've got the guns, and they've got plenty of nades to work with here. And they're moving together as this killer unit. But Flesha, man, he just continues to deliver for Fnatic. And he had to be the one to do it, considering Dennis only had the Mag-7. He was always going to be pressured down by a play through main. And, well, Forrest just digs two kills out of nowhere. But Krim's now in the perfect position with the perfect gun. Shuts down the final two. And that was an extraordinarily close game so far. NIP and Fnatic, this is a brawl between these two. This is a brawl between Flusha and uh, NIP, basically. He's sitting on 20 kills at the end of the first half. That is insane. Considering his team, I mean, it's still, you know, 7-8, the score at the end of the first half. Fnatic trailing, but Flusha, man, he has certainly shown up. Yeah, this... This is going to be a great game. Prediction quickly into the second half. What do you reckon we're going to see here? All right, NIP are going to lock it down. All right, we've got the NIP lockdown from Samla, but guys, we'll be back in just a second to find out who locks this game down. This is going to be a very tough task, but we are at 7 to 8. We are underway. T side will be Fnatic. We have the Flash and the Smoke on Flusher. Everyone else going in on the, just the armor. And now let's look at an NIP. They're going, wow, they're going very up close to pop here. Three players basically trained-ish towards this. They're hearing the steps as well. They're hearing those sh windows get shot out. And while hearing the windows sh getting shot out isn't a clear tell, I mean, obviously they have the option now to throw smokes from the B halls towards that A site. And that's what uh, Fnatic are doing when they shoot out the windows. For Lasha, he's the man obviously holding there with the smoke. But this might be enough to tell for an NIP, you know, this might be an A hit. So we need to be ready. They're keeping four players locked solid. And wow, yeah, Pyth, he's got a peek up close. Now what do Fnatic do? Because they have to realize perhaps the game is up. And this is the thing. The, the plan's been noted. And Pitt's gone and punished both of them. Went and flush go down. But where's the rest of the attack coming from? It's Crimson Dennis working their way through Ivy. Exist was watching it earlier. Backed away. Readjusted to a better position. And shuts out Dennis. This has left just Crimson JW alive. Yeah, but it's not done yet. JW, he's done a little bit of damage here. Pyth is very low on HP as well, so if they can catch him out, this would be big. Exist gets caught looking the wrong way, and somehow he lives, and that costs Crims his life. JW trying to bring it back into a 1v2, a 1v1, but Freiburg with the full HP will end it for Fnatic. And that's just a testament to how crazy some of the individual players are on Fnatic, that you know their, their plan can get figured out, everything can go wrong, they can get sniped by Pyth and lose two players early, but they'll still turn it into a 1v1, just to make things interesting. It's, it's obscene to watch how talented these guys are, but then again, a lot of the teams are starting to notice how much work basically is being put into anti-stratting on the NIP side. They know a lot of these kind of default plays that are coming out, all the nuanced plays that are being read into. Now, Threat is bringing a lot of that to the plate, especially in the pistols. So again, that sort of start was very unique, putting all those players towards Ivy, but, excuse me, towards Pop. But anyway, let's get into this round as we do have the CZs, the pistols, the scouts coming out for Fnatic. And on the other side of things, NIP pushing up super close. Now, I love this from NIP personally, is when Forrest gets super, super close towards the T side, pushes all the way up, gets the information, and instantly, Getright's already cheated himself over towards B. He's got there early, so now he can support Freiburg. But again, this is still Fnatic. These guys can still break through and bring these rounds close, even if the game plan is known. And even Pyth is cheating over towards Connector now. Exist is spotting Alley. He sees no one. Forrest still sees nobody in A main. And so this is giving, yeah, so much information over here to NIP. They should have a strong defense going into this B site hold when it comes. And they're holding way back as well so that they can't get overwhelmed easily by the Tech Nines, potentially, by the CZs, etc. right? The pistols, you get up close with those pistols, you can get overwhelmed very quickly. Fnatic are known for just moving in as this unit and crushing through the defense. So NIP instead, they're saying, okay, if we can pick you guys off at range, great. Otherwise, we're just going to be confident in our retake. Not a bad plan at all. Freiburg's already spotted out one, spots out two, going to drop the nade down towards the site, allowing Getright and Pitt to get up close and personal. There's the SMGs coming out. That's a bit of a mop-up coming in. There's still a molly on JW, so there's still danger to be had. And the Deagle with Crims is not going to be 
uh, undone just yet. Left into a 3v4. It is going to be surely a cleanup for NIP, but still, Fnatic can make this costly and pretty darn close. JW's up close. It looks for the shot, and it's the spray transfer coming in from Forrest. Freiburg will hit the last headshot on Dennis, and the bomb will get defused with plenty of time. Pyth even had the kit. He's even resetting it in case they want to go and pick up yep. a gun. So, NIP, it all goes according to plan. A little bit of uh, an aggressive retake just because they decided to get up there in their face, get right with that UMP, right? You know, they kind of charged the site, really put the pressure on Fnatic. But then the guys with the rifles, they stayed at, out back and they took advantage of that advantage of range, basically, of the fact that they can hit the headshots from way far away. Fnatic, not so much with the pistols, etc. So, real solid work there. That's a confidence building round for NIP, everything going according to plan. Fnatic, all they can think is that, well, okay, it's kind of like the first half, right? You know, we yep. lost the pistol, Nip got the palm plant in the second round of the pistol, so did Fnatic here. Now if they can get another plant, this would be huge for Fnatic, for their economy. They certainly need it. Get right though, I think, has an idea of the plan, as does Forrest. Again, pushed up pretty close. The, the CT aggression was something we were looking for in, in the likes of Crims that just never seemed to come until it was very, very late in the late in the half uh, round. So, I see that a little early on. But, you know, Fnatic aren't showing much. They don't really have much to show. They only have the pistols. So, taking their time on this is pretty much going to be key. There's no point just rushing into it just yet. See if they can pick one. See if they can punish one. Those deagles can be deadly. Asking the P250s up close. So, we'll see what they can come up with here as to how they intend to get that bomb planted, ideally. Yeah, I'm curious. This is actually, uh, actually acting as a little bit of a bait. The bomb gets planted, or spotted, rather, obviously, mm -hmm. by Forrest. Pyth will be the one to find the headshot. Forrest and Popdog turns away just as they come down, but he should have heard the steps. Yep, that's enough information for him, and he's going to walk right into a trap. Flush is there to hit the headshot. Pyth pushes aggro as well. He gets punished. This is a little scary now for NIP. They have to be careful not to throw this away. Get right's only got the Swag 7, so it's not necessarily the best gun to be dealing with rushes. And look at it, Fnatic now see that opportunity. They see a chance to get back into this round, and Getright's going to push up close again. As you said, though, that Mag-7 sitting back on the site was a pretty risky way to approach that round. So now, looking at Fnatic, they're taking the bomb down towards Ivy. Flush of fine JW. He does recover the gun. It's not ideal, but it doesn't really matter. He's taken down the opponent, leaving just Exist and Freiburg alive. And they're going to be left scratching their heads going, how the hell did we just lose this one? Right now they're gambling. They're wondering. Freiburg... They're kind of crossing their fingers, hoping that Fnatic were going to mess up and go towards the B site, but that's not going to be the case. Headshot instant on Exist, but he does take out JW. So it's only the man advantage now for Fnatic. Bomb planted and Exist in a position in the back lines. Freiberger there is going to join him. And while all three players, they've got the Triangle of Doom here set up for Fnatic. So a lot of angles here for NIP to worry about when they move out onto this site. Ooh, and Flush is already flanking. He mo I don't think he's going to see them, which could be another issue, but he'll get the timing now. And now Crims and Wenton need to be the ones to stop this. This is nasty. They have no idea. Freiburg is sticking that diffuse, but peekaboo! Could have been a catastrophe if Freiburg was farther along on that diffuse. Exist instead is going to be the one to stick it, and he's going to get overwhelmed by Wenton, who comes out of nowhere with the MP9. And this, what a catastrophic round for an IP. What was that business? Going aggro against the pistols, getting up close. Three players dying to instant headshots, basically. It, it felt overzealous instantly. Forrest, I think, pushed his luck as far as he should, and then Pitt just went, okay, I'll join in. It's a little too far, maybe got a little too excited, a little too ahead of themselves, and now they've opened that tiny crack in a window. And Fnatic, they're going to crawl through that. They're going to be right back in this game if they get the next couple of rounds building on. Their T-side is certainly nothing to be sneered at. We're going to wait and see if this does become a bit more of an issue down the line. But again, we haven't seen much from Fnatic. This is still very early days into their T-side here, so... Just see how they approach the next couple of rounds. Yeah, this is definitely, it's not like, you know, a kind of crawl like in the horror movies where they're just like slowly inching their way forward. They're like army crawling this, man. Mm. They're just flying. Fnatic are not going to let this opportunity pass up. And an eco round win is huge, as you guys can see. Just mad money for them. All rifles. All the utility. We're approaching the minute mark and they've hardly used anything at all. They're going to have everything they need to just go crashing onto a site here. And well, it is up to NIP to take a bit of a risk. Forrest once again getting into A main, hoping to catch somebody out. JW right around the corner. Forrest spotted him, looking for that spray, but JW with the AK is going to shut him down. JW not going to let that one happen. Now the rest of NIP, what do you do here? You're left with an AWP on pit. You've got an M4 on exist. I guess it's a little bit of a surprise as to what you're going up against. If you're Fnatic, you've just seen a P250 on Forrest, but... Not much here, and NIP going to gamble themselves, going to position towards A, assuming maybe that's where the hit's going to come, but it's not going to be easy to see. If Flusher notes there's no one at B, they can adjust. There's still 30 seconds on this one. They can still make plays elsewhere, but it has to start coming in towards, well, in the next couple of seconds. They need to start making something happen, and 
Oh, Flush is showing his hand. Might give away the game, and it's going to be a quick play towards B. Here we go. Look at that. Instantly, with 20 seconds left, they're going to make the quick adaption, and it's going to catch him out. Yeah. They're just moving straight on. Went in with the bomb plant now, and NIP in a bit of a tight spot because JW, he's lurked his way out here onto A main as well. Get right will eventually just run him down with the CZ, which was the best thing that Get right could hope to do. Now he's got a gun to work with. He has that AK going into this 4 on 4 retake. Or 4 on 4 save. Looks like it. It's looking like NIP don't want to have anything to do with this. He actually gets the gun, and NIP are saying, right, Fnatic, we'll let you close the gap just a little bit. We'll let you get up to 9. But we will have a full buy going into the next round now, so... Fair enough, fair enough, NIP. They don't want to throw it away the way the Fnatic did, actually, attempting very difficult retakes. And the clutches both times ended up going NIP's way. So now it's just Fnatic, it's NIP showing some restraint, not wanting to put themselves in a forced buy scenario. Yeah, their money wouldn't have been great coming into this round. So actually coming out like that isn't the end of the world, because what, what can Forrest really go for here? There's no one who can really drop him out. So I guess it's kind of playing around with the CZ again. It's sure. Not especially great. if he's playing close A main, close pop dog like that with the CZ. It's perfect. I mean, you can do massive damage there. So I'm surprised to see them go skipping quite so much on the nades. So this is a weird situation here yeah. from NIP. They're actually just going for like a weird, just slightly investing in the nades, mm. forced only just picking up the CZ. They're really hoping that they're just going to be able to get the job done with the rifles. Not fully committing to this round. They're almost treating it like it's an eco round. Again, though, NIP didn't really show what they had in those previous rounds. They, they, I don't know if they know there's an all-part for grabs, and there you go. Pip finds Crims just chilling out down by Alley, just off the end of Ivy. So not a bad start getting that first pick. Going to remove at least one bit of map presence and map knowledge for Fnatic, unless they want to pull someone back, which ideally you don't really want to do, but they might have to at this point. Yeah, JW and Flusher have to come back to this. Now Pip could just hold the angle if he really wants to, and Flusher could be fed to the machine now. Eventually, eventually they need to work their way in here. But there you go, Flusha sneaks his way right into certain death. Pyth waiting for him over there by Alley. And now that's the bomb dropped as well, so they have to use a nade to try and work out how to get it back. Bomb will get picked up. And so this is still down to two Fnatic players holding over on the Pop Dog side of things. They could try and set it up. There's the smoke going down to block it off. Pyth with a bit of the body block, so he's going to be able to get out here right on the edge. And he turns around, takes out three players total in the round. He's done his bit. Now it comes down to the remaining NIP players here. Two-man advantage for them, and can they just keep Fnatic from planting the bomb? That would be huge. Went in one-for-one one trade. And now it's all down to JW, who's had a bit of a slow map so far, but he's perfectly capable of bringing this out for Fnatic, of bringing in a big clutch round. But it's just not going to happen. Force with the backstab from A-Main, the Lurk. An 11th round picked up for NIP, and that when they were skimping. Mm. They, their, their utility, their nades, their smokes were so limited. It was just off the back of what you mentioned. It's, it's piss orping. It's actually very, very competent, whether it be... His aggressive positioning, I guess you could argue in that, holding the angle, but he's also very good at falling back, finding new angles. He expected the play through pop already. Great little bit of work from him coming through, and you know this kind of follows on from what we saw in their earlier game, is he's actually playing a very impactful role in this, but Fnatic aren't exactly in a bad position just yet. They can still play in this round. JW's gonna get a little bit of attention from the, uh, well, I was gonna say the Molly, but he got a bit more attention from Freiburg finding two and already shutting down what Fnatic tried to start here. It's down to Crimson Flusher, and it looks like NRP just picked up the pace again. Yeah, they were ready for it. And that's so unfortunate for JW getting flashed at the top of the ladder like that. He had no idea that his head was sticking out wide in the open. Crims, thanks to the shadow on the floor, he's going to be able to pre-fire Freiburg. Not a chance for Freiburg to turn that around. But still, man advantage here for an IP, and they still have Forrest on Sniper. So if Crims steps out into the open, if they try and make their way onto that A site, Forrest is going to be there to lock that down and get right even looking in from Pop Dog. So not a tough situation. I mean, not an easy one here for Fnatic. And there you go, Forrest. Flusher just has to check these angles. He has to try and get out there to make something happen. Crims will find the kill on Get Right, brings it back to a 1v2. And he still has that bomb and a 50 seconds to play with. But Forrest now waiting in a connector, not going to let him escape. And it's 9 to 12 NIP. They keep growing their lead. I mean, their economy isn't super solid. No. They only keep the two players alive. But it's good enough. And Fnatic now, after tapping into their bank in the last round, are they going to be able to actually keep going on here? Do they want to go for the Force Buy game, or are they going to show some restraint? I, I think we're going to see that there's not much else. They, they, they can't, surely. Okay, we've got a CZ on Wenton with a bit of armor and a smoke. That's that's it. So I guess at the end of the day, they have to respect this scoreline starting to build up and their opponents. They can't just force into these rounds and make something happen. Again, I think that veto is starting to work out wonders for NIP, suddenly maybe seeing what we can potentially expect from this team going forward. Fnatic, sadly, not quite coming with that same punch as they normally do, but this is a weakened Fnatic. We 
Certainly didn't avoid that topic. It's not going to be the same team as we once saw. Lance is not doing a bad job, but certainly not the same anyway. Exist does find Dennis trying to play through Ivy, and the bombs all the way in spawn. This is maybe just a round to talk things over more than anything. Have a little bit of a chat through, discuss what's going wrong. How can they approach the rest of it? We've, we've sparsely seen any presence towards B so far. When we have, it's been pretty locked down by initially Freiburg and then Get Right coming into the support. Their options are limited here. I want to see what they come up with in this round and see what they bring into the next gun. It's going to have to be that default play, but they're wondering now the the issue for Fnatic is they're wondering if it's going to be continued aggression coming out. I mean, so far they're so worried about leaving any place unprotected just because NIP have been so aggressive in Alley, they've been aggressive in uh, A main as well. Mm -hmm. Another kill for Crim, so I mean, at least they get two kills out of this yeah. eco, Fnatic, but. Yeah, I would think that Fnatic would want to try and go towards Brown Halls, get up into that B side again, because they have had like at least a little bit of success over there catching an IP out. So maybe, maybe that's going to be the call here for what uh, what comes up next. Go into a default and then try and end up on B. Well, it's it's the one place I guess, as you said, that there hasn't been that much CT aggression. Otherwise, you got kind of Pit going down Ivy every now and then. You got Forest pushing up by main. Get right. Probably, as I say this, will probably push up B, but as you said, it's a place that hasn't been tested as much, but it doesn't seem as though that's Fnatic's game plan for now. Not at all. They continue to show that they're stubborn, in fact. So initial nades going out on the A site. Incendiary there from Forest. That'll trip up any timings here for Fnatic. Valuable seconds ticking past as the smokes are clearing up, and now Forest, he's even lurked his way in here. He's the welcoming committee, and he's going to pick out, pick up one. No! He gets shut down. JW on 2 HP. Only JW can do those sort of things, but these three players have been seen. The game plan has been spotted, but Pip misses the shot. Now Fnatic up close and personal, but Pip makes it up towards Wenton. Down by Electric. There comes the support from Freiburg, cleaning up the remains. Gerai gets a bit of the action, is now down to Dennis. Sure enough, he's weak and a little bit wounded, but they have this round in hand. 14 to 9. That stubbornness that Fnatic showed gets them punished. What a fantastic shot from Python to Wenton there. That was nuts. And then he just sits and holds the angle because he knows his teammates are alive on that site watching his back. So he can just focus and make sure that there can't be any flank coming in from A-Main from Fnatic, trying to work their way past the trains. He gets to just sit and do his job. And the rest of NIP, they hold their own. So Fnatic now, the frustration, this is where it begins to mount. What can you really hope to do? They don't go for the force buy here either. So they're allowing NIP, or they're, they're giving NIP a, ch a real chance to get up onto match point here. And, and where's that patented Fnatic pause? Where's, where's this been? Ah, Vugo, yeah. Normally, he needs, pull, he needs to pull that trigger. You know, uh, and any other team at this point, you'd say, all right, with this many rounds to NIP, you'd probably assume this is starting to go their way. But it's still, it is still Fnatic, renowned for these sort of, okay, we call the pause, then we start to bring it back, then we start to find the flaws. But this team seems headstrong and, uh, and very stubborn in the way they're playing until now. They, they need to pick this one up. I wouldn't put it past them. It is still Fnatic at their core, but already the game plan's been spotted out. The Molly's starting to burn, and Freiburg's already there with Get Right. Air right is actually going aggressive as well. They're right, wanting to take the fight to him. Hyth will pick up two kills, and Forrest will shut down the push in the end. Match point, six of them coming up here for NIP. All of the pressure now on Fnatic to bring it back. Now would be the time for a pause if ever you were going to do it. Just to slow things down, trying to try to actually, you know, take a moment to just sit and catch your breath. And this is brutal. Look at, look at Flusher, though. I mean, going into the second half, he's picked up four kills. You know, he's, he has massively dropped off, and nobody, well, I mean, he's had a fantastic performance so far. He's at 24, but where's the rest of his team? He's, he needs to have somebody he can count on to get the job done here while he's figuring out what they need to be doing to take down NIP. And that was always Fnatic's biggest selling point. If one player wasn't being the superstar, they had others. Anyone else could step up. JW's been pretty much missing. Dennis, where have you gone? Dennis is orping now, apparently, so everything's seemingly changing here, and we are seeing attention towards Brown Halls has been met by sheer aggression from Get Right pushing up, getting the frag in hell. Wenton might just be next. Oh, Get Right turns his back, and he's going to get caught. Nice punish coming out from Wenton. Could expect that it would just be Flusher lurking alone, so no there. Uh, well, a little bit of a minor error for Get Right, but honestly, you do sometimes, that's just how it goes. JW, though. He's going to be working his way out, playing the forest role, getting out through A main, looking for the opening pick, but Forrest will shut him down. He shows him, hey, bro, there's only one of us on this turf out in this yard. You're down to three now for Fnatic, clutching onto this game as best they can. Dennis has a bit of a shot at this one. He finds Pit, so we're back down to a 3v3. And Fnatic are fighting tooth and nail for this, trying to work their way through, but there's still Forrest, Exist, and Freiburg to go. And now it's all about patience, really. NIP, they know that they've got the angles. Dennis is still locked in Pop Dog. They have a man on the site. That's Forrest. 
They still have Exist alive over by Ivy. That's his usual spot. So we have to see. Crims, he's going to have to make his way through here, but they have no utility to work with, Fnatic. So it's all about just straight up aim fights. They need to find those shots. But Crims has managed to work his way out through Alley. So now things get a little bit easier for Fnatic. They're going to try and consolidate the defense and IP. They need to get that trade frag in. Where is Exist? He's baiting his teammate. He's actually taking his time with this, and now he's giving it away. He's holding close, and Crims, he's in position, but still, that doesn't save him. And Crims opens it up for Exist to take a double kill. And it's all on Dennis now. He's picked up one kill, and he's not going to find the last one. Exist instead will come up massive. He makes up for feeding Force of the Wolves. He gets the job done. And it's a 16-9 finish for NIP. They're going to London. That has got to be a sick game for those guys. You heard how riled up both of these teams were? And for NIP to pick it up on train, that goes against the odds. You know, historically, that was a fanatic map to win, even if these two were close competitors. This is pretty sick stuff to see if I'm honest. And Fnatic didn't look like their former selves. Ah, no. There's going to be some clear frustration on Fnatic camp yep. right now because I think that most of them are going to be thinking, what um, what exactly happened? You know, individually, we weren't able to perform. Flush up, he was the only one who made it into the 20s. Everybody else was like single digits or low teens. That's that's not going to cut it. You really do need to have a couple players there that Flush can, can count on to get the job done for him if he's going to drop off in an individual way. So, Fnatic. Not going to be able to make it through first seed. It feels weird saying that. You know, for so yeah, long they really dominated. Does. They died. Hey, Andrews, what's up? <laughs> but for so long they dominated. And, well, not this time. Yeah, not this time, I think, is the perfect summary. It's the return of NIP. No! They're back. Oh. Woo!
the ninjas in pajamas securing a semi-final spot. All good in the hood, it seems, for Threats NIP, as they've managed to make it kind of replicate some success that they found in Malmo. Speaking a bit too soon, it's two best of ones, but the Fnatic story does not end here, and that's where we're going to kind of take this convincing, gents. 16-9, Yanko, Anders, what do we have to say about that one? I mean... It was pretty convincing in the end. Another thing is that actually NIP lost the, the pistol in the first half. They managed to grind their way back. And I also thought that, that when they lost the anti-eco round, which is something that doesn't happen to them very often, yeah. I thought, oh, maybe they you know, ma made a great mistake here. Maybe this is going to bring a Fnatic back into the game. But no, after that, they, they went uh, on an eco for, uh, for one round. And after that, they came straight back into it. And, and there's the same kind of sentiments from you. Just you. I mean, you. I'll be honest. The vibe I was getting from you is that you are. You basically do not care how Fnatic does until Olaf's back. <laughs> is the vibe I got from that you. That might be a bit harsh, I think. But uh, but I mean, it, it just it just feels weird. It feels it's odd knowing. I mean, it's, it'd be one thing if they said Olaf Meister is retiring and he's no longer playing the game. You know, then you'd be like, okay, I'm, I have to accept. You know, changes. Sure. I don't like changes in general, but I mean, the fact that he's sort of, he's lurking out there and he's hopefully, very much hopefully getting better, um, it's, it's, it means, you know, everything feels temporary. I, I think you made a good point in the pre-show that it's not just about changing the play. There are a lot of little things that you have to change because of it. Communication was going to be off and at some point it was it was pretty, pretty clear that the, the comms were off. I, I think there was a round in particular where Flasha was in the held position near the green train and Venton was watching Ivy and Flasha knew that one of the NIP players were, was already outside and probably communicated something to Venton but maybe he didn't understand exactly what. He didn't understand that he could be shot in the back from that angle. You know, that, that gave NAP the outer bomb side pretty much so it's those small things that can make uh, a big difference. Miscommunication was was the, probably a, a real factor. I do you want to just point out something, uh, echo something that you were saying in the, in the, in the green room, because uh, it's true, I mean, Getright's been doing a lot of the entry ragging, and obviously that's a big change up from the way that he used to play, which is kind of insane, isn't it? Getright's had this like massive highlight career of playing, uh, you know, the best lurker in the world and almost sort of defining and, and even inventing the, the term for it in some ways. And then, uh, you know, now he's playing an entry frag and he seems to be doing really well, so. I, I want to ask Threat and or someone ask them to see if it's like, you know, they're basically trying to switch it up a little bit or is it basically a mind game kind of a thing? Because they were like faking outside, Forrest was the only one there, he dies yeah. and maybe, you know, if it were Getright dying, they would be like, oh, it's probably a fake. Getrath was alone there, but instead Getrath is with the rest of the team in the inner bombs and he's actually the one pushing through the smokes and gaining ground for his team and managed to get, I think, three kills in that round and, and secure it for his team. Yeah. It does seem like Threat has taken this this uh, leadership role, the best we've seen, well, one of the best we've seen uh, in current Counter-Strike. I don't want to neglect other coaches slash in-game leaders, it's just that probably with him it's like the biggest difference, right? The, the, That's it true. shows like the biggest improvement. And, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if decisions like that were being made behind the scenes. But, uh, gents, it's been a pleasure to talk to you. We will be talking m a lot more about the best of three coming up because we've got Astralis Luminosity. Like, good God, that's going to be fun to dissect. But we do will be taking a quick break just to catch our breath after Fnatic fall to the lower bracket and the Ninjas are already in London. They're going to be sitting, putting their feet up for a bit, chilling before they do go on to compete in the chilling. semi-finals. Chilling. That's, that's, that's exactly the what they're going to say. Chilling. Is that actually the word, Swedish word? No, they just can't speak English. Oh, <laughs> damn. I thought I was learning some Swedish. All right, they're going to be shilling. Yolk. And we are going to take a break there when we, we come go. back. Astralis versus Luminosity. It's going to be a big one. It is an elimination match, and we'll see you then.